Good morning and welcome to the Ridgeview. I hope you've grabbed your coffee and you've tuned in to learn a little bit more about the Lent season. Lent, we have all of these words. 40 days from Ash Wednesday till Easter, not including Sundays. That has to do with the Catholic faith. And we have themes like the number three, how many times the rooster, the rooster crows with Peter. Um, three is the day between Good Friday and, and Easter Sunday. We talk about Good Friday in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, the season of Lent, of course, includes Good Friday, Palm Sunday. What is that about? Why are these palm branches involved? Ash Wednesday, we talk about joy, death, freedom, Passover. What does all of this have to do with Lent? If you would like to share an experience you've had during Lent, whether it was something you gave up, um, something you learned, a spiritual practice you might experiment with, um, would you please share that in the comments or film your own video? We would love to hear more um, about those things. But let's get started with Ash Wednesday. And so as Ash, Ash Wednesday launches us into the 40 days leaning up to Easter, we get to reflect on how much God loves us. And in reflecting about how much God loves us, um, we get challenged to give something up. And so I want to tell you a little bit about a story of mine. So my story begins with how much I enjoy sleeping. <laughs> Sleeping is a hobby for me. You could say kayaking and hiking and uh, boba tea, like bubble tea, um, which is a fun Asian tradition, but sleeping could definitely be included in there. Pottery, walking my dog Piper, all of these are hobbies. And so I was in a sermon one day hearing about all the possible opportunities to worship God and not missing a moment I also have the story of the widow's mite in my heart. And I thought to myself, what is the most valuable thing in my life? And how could I worship God with that? And it was sleep. So that is part of my story of why I felt called to foster. That's the silly part. The most important part was I was raised in such a way that I was told that I was loved and that I was valuable, that I mattered, that I could dream big. And to think that not every child is told that, I knew that I could make a difference. And so I started to research about it. Well, let's back up. I avoided it. I avoided it for over 30 years between living in Houston and the social life did not include bringing your children around. And then I moved to East Texas and in East Texas, there were so few young adults that whether or not you had children, didn't matter. You had to be friends with everybody who was close to your peer or demographic because they were your only choice. And so as we got started um, in my curiosity for the fostering world, I was actually really insecure. And so God nudged me and nudged me a little bit more, nudged me a little bit more. Um, I was a camp director, uh, not camp director, I'm sorry, camp counselor with um, our youth. And they came to nickname me Mama Llama. And while I was there, a nurse volunteer was fostering her own infant and several of the other counselors that were there were a part of her um, babysitting or respite team. Um, so that influenced me. Then I came back and one of um, the good friends of mine in the church was wearing a blue uh, ribbon that said that April is uh, child Awareness Month, Child Abuse Awareness Month, and he was actually the chair of our local child advocacy board, which include fostering. Um, and then I can't remember the third one, but there was a third one and God was nudging and nudging and nudging and I broke down and I just said, God, I by myself, it's just me. I know I want to worship you in this way, but who will help me? And it became very clear that God was going to provide that in my life. I would love to share with you some time how God then sequentially put multiple people in my life and how our relationships were enriched by the fostering program. Um, those relationships will be lifelong, but you certainly learned how to worship God with your sleep. I had no idea 
my fostering profile said I was willing to accept children between the age of zero and 12. And I knew the need of my area was eight and up. And so I had no idea that my first placement would be an infant. I was so fortunate to be surrounded by an incredible team. And so these three women who happened to be grandmas in the church came and they descended on my home. And they turned my house into baby ready. And within two hours, I had woken up on a Wednesday morning, not a single baby thing in my house. And here are these women who came in with cribs and high chairs and made a list of the things I would need and went and provided those. What a game changer. And it makes me think of all of the moms to be out there who don't have that, or um, it's their first child, or maybe they are single. And so as the evening wound down and they began to leave, I held one of their arms back um, and I turned to her and I said, how do I prepare a bottle? She knew that I didn't know what was gonna be required of me. And you don't know what you don't know. So even when we come to seasons like Lent where we don't know what we don't know until we do, fostering, whatever it might be, I wanna challenge you to ask in your heart, what do you hold most valuable? And how can you make that an act of worship during this Lent season? Christ came. And we're in the season where God carries out his greatest mission to offer redemption and rescue to his people. Whatever the thing or the passion in your life, whatever breaks your heart is where you will be willing to act, where you will be willing to extend your life in such a way that worships God. So my question to you today is, would you ask God, Lord, what do you want to do through me? I'll join you in your prayers and God will lay it before you. Your instinct might be to avoid it, but if you're in the wrestling ring with God, spoiler alert, God will win. And when God wins, it will be the best part of your life. Take a risk. Would you ask God today, what do you want to do through me? Thanks be to God.